morning, Your Honor. Christopher Heidrich from the Commonwealth. Good morning, Your Honor. Keith Talbot from the Supreme Court. All right. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Commonwealth. Cooper T. Egan, please. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Could you introduce yourself to the court, please, and spell your last name? My name is Sergeant Keith Egan, E-G-A-N. And you're assigned with what organization, sir? I am a Massachusetts State Police assigned to the District Attorney's Office, Criminal Investigation Section. How long have you been a trooper? Twenty years. Now, back on September 11th of 2014 at about 5.15 p.m., were you on duty that day? I was. And where were you at that time? 23 St. Paul in Blackstone, Massachusetts. What was your purpose in going to that address in Blackstone? To search the residence at that location. Did you have a search warrant on that day? We did. Your Honor, I just want to make a continuing objection to testimony regarding the search. The objection is noted for the record. Thank you. Did you have an opportunity to go inside that residence? I did. And can you describe to the court what you did upon going into that residence? Sure. We were assigned in teams. I was assigned to the second floor back bedroom. I was in the SCBA, self-contained breathing apparatus, basically head to toe covering my body. And I was equipped with a shovel as well. And can you describe the conditions that you saw in that residence? Yes. When I first entered the residence, you can immediately observe a lot of trash, recyclables, rotting food, plates, kitchen, similar to what's in your household trash bag, bottles strewn upon a place, feces, diapers, and there's a bug infestation. A bug infestation? Yes, sir. You can see like bugs flying around, basically. And is that self-contained breathing apparatus and suit that you referred to, was that in connection with the conditions in the residence? That is correct. Did you go to any particular locations in that residence? I did, sir. I went to the second floor back bedroom. Upon entering the bedroom, what did you do there? After we were able to get in, we had a shovel, a pile of debris on the floor, which was a lot of recyclables, milk containers that still contain milk and fluids inside, rotting. We used a shovel to clear a pathway to begin our search. The bed was covered. There was a space on the bed where we had to remove debris to get a place to put our items off the floor and to conduct a thorough search. It was covered with the same items I described earlier, plus mold on the wall, stains on the wall. We started removing the trash to get to various locations in there to conduct our search. So you indicated that you were using a shovel up in that room? Yes, it was equivalent to like a snow shovel, probably about this wide, two and a half feet maybe. And just it was just easier to remove the debris from location to location. Could you estimate the depth of the debris? Yeah, it was approximately two feet high in some locations, some a little shallower, but overall probably two feet was the most depth. What did you do once you started clearing that debris? Once we started clearing the debris, we started focusing on what was in the room. There wasn't much furniture in there, so as far as moving stuff was okay. We made our way to a closet in the bedroom, which contained numerous items inside. We cleared out that area just to open the door and get inside. So once you were inside that closet, what did you do? We started removing items. There were several boxes in there. There was trash in there as well. 
numerous uh, items of uh, clothing uh, stacked up uh, from floor to almost ceiling. Uh, we started removing the boxes and took to conduct a thorough search to see what was inside those boxes. And upon removing those boxes, uh, what did you do? Uh, as far as uh, Sergeant Keeney and I were passing the boxes back and forth, the box came out, uh, we opened the box and uh, we discovered the uh, human remains. And what did you do upon seeing that? Upon seeing that, uh, we made an observation that through our training experience, yes, this was a uh, human remains. Uh, we notified uh, via radio I, uh, to have the uh, pathologist uh, come up, as well as crime scene. The pathologist was on site that day, is that correct? That is correct, sir. And when you say you opened the box, uh, how was the box, uh, what was the original position of the box? Sure, the, the box was placed inside the closet. It was a brown box, uh, cardboard, um, contained uh, items on top of the box, such as a blanket. Uh, there were miscellaneous uh, pieces of clothing that uh, when we opened the box, we could observe. As we started uh, removing the top portion of the box, that is when we uh, located the, uh, the human remains. The box was probably uh, maybe like the same two, two feet wide maybe, by, by uh, maybe a foot and a half as well. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. No questions. No questions? No questions. Uh, Neonatal line depicted there. Again, difficult to see based upon it's a copy of a copy, but yes, it's right below the surface here. And how is it that you're able to determine that line? It's much more visible when you have it underneath the microscope. You can change your light, change your focus. You can also have light going up underneath it to shine through the tube. Uh, so it is a lot more visible in person, I would say. And are there the, the colors that are depicted there, the light and the dark, is that of any assistance to you in finding that line? Well, it just tells me this is the dentin, right here, the inner material of the tube, and then here's the enamel up. So the other lines that we're seeing, there's like a, there's a line between the dentin and the enamel. That's not what we're no, talking that's about, not right? We know. We're talking about an area more closer to the Within surface. Within the dark portion of it. And was the line visible in all the teeth that you examined? Not that I can see everywhere. Some places it wasn't visible. It came up, like, at least one section of each tooth did have it, yes. Not every section that I looked at, the multiple sections could I see it everywhere. Some just weren't as polished as others. What are the factors that uh, determine whether a line is more visible or less visible? Well, uh, the material is very fragile, and when you polish it, in some places it wants to pull away from the material that's, that's in some resin, and um, that can cause flaking of the surface and other problems, or the surface can flake off, as you see right here. Well, there's Nothing I can say about what's going on there. It's just not um, visible enough. Also helps that the teeth are a little bit damper than those. Uh, that helps the uh, image come out better. I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. If they're a little bit moist, uh, it, that way a lot of the surface um, roughness goes away. You can see it's going down. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry, I just can't hear. Uh, I'm sorry. I can Why don't you have a seat? Thank you. Well, I, I do have another photograph, if I may. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Describe the core, starting with what's depicted on the left side. What's depicted there? This is another tooth section. Here again, you're looking at the dentin. Here's the inner part of the tooth, that's the pulp chamber. And here's the enamel right here. So this line's not relevant. That's just the difference between the dentin and the enamel. Out here is the surface of the tooth. And right along the margin of it, I can see the dark line again along the edge. And then you can actually see the uh, enamel that's been deposited after the neonatal line formed. And you're referring to what on that photograph? Uh, this line right here. That's the de deposition of enamel? Here's where the neonatal line formed, and then uh, the individual lived for some period after that, and more enamel got um, laid down after that. What's the uh, level of uh, microscope that enables you to see this? What's the magnification? Oh, I'd have to check exactly what magnification I used, um, like 60 power. Now, if we could go on to the, on the right side, that photograph, could you describe what's depicted there? Uh, same kind of thing. Are these, uh, these are oriented differently. Uh, here again is the dentin, 
here's enamel, and here's the material that was put in for sectioning. And right at the surface, again, you've got that uh, thin, dark line that curves in. It also uh, follows the normal shape of a neonatal line, too. And so um, here's the outer part of the tooth. There's the neonatal line along its edge, and then additional growth of enamel past that. And when you're pointing at that, what you're referring to is that neonatal line. Are you pointing at the darker line or the white or the lighter line? The darker line beneath the surface. Now, exhibit number 49. Starting with the photograph on the right, it's closest to you. Can you describe what's depicted there? Mm. This is another tooth section. Uh, there's dentin right there again. There's the pulp chamber. So this would be the top of the tooth sticking up in your mouth. Then here's the enamel here on the dark portion through here. And do you see a neonatal line depicted uh, there? Yes, I do. The dark line near the surface and then additional enamel deposition past that. And on the photograph on the left, can you describe what's depicted there? Uh, this one is not particularly clear. I chose this image for, for that. So, Again, some photographs are clearer than others, is that correct? Oh, yes. Uh, so I didn't use my report because they weren't the clearest images. And yeah, be before you take it away, oh, could sorry. you put that back up? Doctor, does the, the two images, are they the same tooth or the same section of the same tooth? I didn't combine these, so I have to check. Okay, so them. you don't know that? I don't know that. Okay, thank now. you. Uh, I just have a couple more questions. Okay. Um, exhibit. I'd have to check. Um, again, those are copies of copies, and I can see them much better in my original images. Okay. But uh, based on your um, training and experience, your examination of these uh, images under that uh, magnified microscope, are you satisfied to a reasonable degree of certainty as an anthropologist that the neonatal line is present in these teeth? Yes, for individual number two, yes. Why don't you return your seat? Did you have an opportunity to examine the remains of infant number three? Yes, I did. Can you explain to the court the process you used to conduct that examination? No. Can I say simply that it was identical to individual number two? Did you make any observations with respect to infant number three? Uh, the results were very similar for the first part of the, of the um, examinations that I did. Uh, in terms of dental development, in terms of bone measurement, in terms of overall ossification, the remains were consistent with either a late-term fetus or an early birth, or, I'm, I'm sorry, an early um, neonate. No, I did not. There are some available standards for that, trying to determine sex from remains this young, and they're not highly reliable. Now back again with respect to infant number three. Did you take measurements of the remains of infant number three? Yes, I did. And how did those measurements, uh, or did those measurements assist you in determining the age of this infant? Yes, they were uh, consistent with the late-term fetus or uh, um, early, um, or an early um, neonate. And how about the dental development? Uh, did you examine that as well? Yes, I did. And did that assist you in determining the age? Yes, that was the same at uh, the, the length uh, findings, uh, consistent with a late fetus or an early um, neonate. And once again, on the um, 
process of ossification. Um, did that assist you as well in determining age? Yes, my findings were the same. So the ossification was consistent with the age as well? Yes, late fetus or early neonate. Did you attempt to determine if infant number two had a neonatal line? Yes, I did. You use the same process you use for infant number one? To yes, I did. That? And as a result of your examination of the specimens uh, from infant number two under a microscope, were you able to make any determination with respect to the presence of a neonatal line? I could not find a neonatal line anywhere in the sections that I examined.